modes of transmission of HIV. Do you know where HIV resides and perpetuates in humans? Well, the HIV resides in the body fluids and secretions, that is, blood, semen, vaginal secretions and breast milk. Even though HIV is present in all the body fluids and secretions, its concentration is more in blood than the rest. Saliva, tears, sweat, fecus, urine also contains HIV, but with negligible concentrations and therefore it cannot be transmitted from one person to another through these. You may now wonder whether HIV can live outside the human body. Well, yes, it can, but only for 15 to 30 seconds. Transmission of HIV occurs by four main routes. Sexual mode of transmission is the most common route for spread of infection. The risk of acquiring the infection is more in persons having unprotected sex. The risk is also very high in the presence of sexually transmitted diseases or STDs. The other most probable means of transmission is by blood transfusion with HIV infected blood. In this case, the chances of acquiring infections are 100%. Next. The HIV can be transmitted to the baby from the infected mother during pregnancy or during delivery. Lastly, using HIV contaminated instruments like syringes, needles, surgical or dental instruments may also transmit the HIV virus. Now let's break some myths and look at how HIV does not spread. Sharing food touching and hugging, kissing on cheek, sharing toilet seats, sharing belongings, through mosquitoes and other insect bites. Stages of infection. Before the ultimate deterioration, the HIV infection progresses in a stage-wise manner. These stages can be summarized into four different periods. Let's look at them now. Usually, it occurs within one to six weeks of acquiring infection. In this stage, the infected person presents symptoms like fever for two, three days, which disappear in two, three weeks. This stage is characterized by the presence of high levels of virus in the blood and absence of antibodies. Antibodies are proteinaceous substances produced in the body to fight against the foreign antigens and neutralize them. This period is known as the window period. Because of the presence of high levels of virus in the blood without the corresponding antibodies. During this window period, the person is capable of transmitting the virus to others. As there are no antibodies produced in this stage, all routine antibody tests will be negative. Stage 2 HIV positive asymptomatic period. HIV positive asymptomatic period is also called as incubation period. As the name indicates, the infected person does not show any symptoms during the stage, although she or he has tested positive for routine antibody tests. This period is also called as incubation period because the infected person does not show any symptoms in spite of the presence of HIV antibodies in his blood. This period lasts for about three to five years. Stage three, HIV positive symptomatic period. This stage lasts for two to three years where the person with a decreasing immunity shows symptoms like loose motions and skin diseases. AIDS stage. This is the last stage of infection which usually occurs 5 to 10 years after the entry of the virus. In this stage, the total immune system of the person is compromised and secondary infections like TB, incessant cough, etc. set in. This stage is characterized by severe weight loss that is up to 10% of the body weight due to unabated fecus or diarrhea for
for about a month and also presence of skin rashes, ulcers and swollen lymph glands. 80 to 90 percent of HIV infected persons survive for a period of 10 years. 5 to 10 percent of HIV infected persons survive only for 3 to 5 years and about 5 percent of HIV infected persons live longer without the development of AIDS. <laughs>